Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petit. Welcome to my channel. In this video series, I will demonstrate how to make the Kate bag. To make this bag, you will need to purchase the pattern from my website. I will include the links to the pattern and all supplies I used in the description box below. In this first video, I will shortly explain how to print and assemble the pattern, what supplies are needed to complete the Kate bag, and quickly walk you through the cutting and interfacing instructions. But first, let me show you the main features of this bag. The pattern features a front zipper pocket, which is perfect to store your phone, keys or other small essentials, plus additional slip pocket located under the flap. There is a white panel at the bottom of the bag, plus additional side panels located on the front of the bag which are great if you want to use some accent fabric. The back panel uses a single piece of fabric and has no pockets, but you could easily add another zipper or slip pocket here. Otherwise, use this area to showcase a beautiful fabric print or a panel. You can use handles to wear the back on your shoulder, but the pattern also includes information to make an adjustable strap so you can wear the back across the body. I have separate videos on how to make one or two piece straps, so you can choose whichever you like more. The bottom of the bag has oval shape. This is not included in the sewing instructions, but I will also add purse fit to my bag today. The top of the bag is secured with a zipper closure and the main compartment is fully lined. Kate bag is large enough to hold a small laptop, tablet, book, wallet, snacks, and so much more. You will find a cargo and slip pockets on one side and a zipper pocket on the other side, which are perfect to organize your smaller belongings. If you want to learn how to make the Kate bag with me, then keep on watching. If you want to find out exactly how to print and assemble the pattern, then check out my other video where I explain everything in more details. In a separate document, you will find a pattern layout. Some pattern pieces are larger than one page and you will have to assemble multiple pages before you cut them out. Other pattern pieces are smaller enough to fit one page, so you can cut them out right away. At first, only print the page with the Test Me Calibration Square and measure it to check if your printer settings are correct. Then you can print the rest of the pattern. Some pages have triangles along the page margins, which indicate that the pattern piece is on multiple pages. To assemble the pattern, you will need to find the page with corresponding letters and numbers inside the triangles and line them up along the margins to make a diamond shape. To make this step easier, trim the side and bottom page margins first. Then you can glue those pages together. Repeat the process on the remaining pages. When you assemble the entire pattern piece, you can cut it out. On the last page of the sewing instructions, you will also find labels for individual pattern pieces. So you can print that page as well, cut the labels, and once you cut your fabric, you can use them to label your pattern pieces. To complete the project, you will need various external and lining fabrics. I am going to use this beautiful wolf print cotton canvas on the outside of my bag and this lovely grey faux leather fabric as an accent on the bottom of my bag, handles and a strap. For the lining, I am using a waterproof canvas today. If you are working with quilting cotton, stretchy or fraying fabric, you might want to consider applying some woven interfacing to the back of the fabric before or after you cut your pattern pieces. I am not going to use any interfacing on my fabrics today because they are stable enough. I will, however, use stabilizer to add some structure to my bag. Depending on your preference, you might want to use fusible fleece or deck of a light if you like more slouchy bags, otherwise use a fusible or sew-in foam stabilizer. In this tutorial, I will use a sew-in foam to stabilize my Kate bag, but we'll show you an alternative way of stabilizing the front of the bag to reduce the bulk at the seams. 
This is very useful, especially if you are sewing on a domestic machine. In the sewing instructions, I apply the stabilizer to the external pieces first, but today we will add the front stabilizer after the pockets and side panels are assembled. If you are using fusible foam, cut it out without the seam allowance and use whichever method you prefer. You will also need a number 5 zipper for the main compartment. The measurements are provided in the sewing instructions. And another number 5 zipper for the external pocket. Plus number 3 zipper for the pocket in the lining. One set of magnetic snap closure. Two 1 inch swivel hooks. And two D rings. Plus one strap adjuster. This is optional, but you can also add 1 inch strap and cups to handles and strap. You will also need a screwdriver to tighten the screws. I will use rivets on this bag, so I will need a hole puncher and a hand press to set them in. As I mentioned in the introduction, I will also install some back feet to the bottom of my bag. If you want, you can add metal tack to the outside of the bag or a woven label to the lining to personalize your Kate bag even more. Pins or clips to hold the fabric in place, a ruler to take some measurements, scissors and snips, an owl, hump jumper and a corner shaper are useful tools to have on hand. A double-sided tape, seam ripper in case if something goes wrong, your favorite marking tools, a multi-surface glue and a fray stop glue. You will need to cut one front facing and one back facing from the external fabric. One top panel from external fabric, one flap from external and lining fabric, one slip pocket from external and lining fabric, one middle panel from external fabric, two internal zipper pockets from lining fabric, two cargo pockets from lining fabric, two external zipper pockets from lining fabric, two zipper tabs from external fabric, one strap connector from external fabric, two side panels from external fabric, one base from external and lining fabric, two bottom panels from external fabric, two handles from external fabric, and one strap from external fabric. Before you cut the back from the external fabric, you will need to fold the pattern piece along the dotted line because it is slightly shorter than the lining pieces. And lastly, you will need to cut one front lining and one back lining from your lining fabric. You can apply woven interfacing to both the external and lining pieces. Only then add the stabilizer. We will stabilize the back panel first. If, like me, you are using sewing foam stabilizer, you will need to cut it out as normal using the folded pattern piece as a template. If you are using fusible stabilizer, cut it out without the seam allowance. You will find dashed lines on pattern piece, so use that as a template instead. Whenever you are ready, center the stabilizer on the wrong side of the fabric and pin it in place. Because I am stabilizing the front of the back slightly different today, I've cut the back stabilizer twice. The other piece will be used to stabilize the front of the back. We're going to base the stabilizer around all sides. When using a fusible stabilizer, you can take the piece to the pressing station and using an iron, fuse it to the fabric. Next, we are going to work on flap pieces. 
because I am using the high loft foam stabilizer, I decided to stabilize the lining side of my flap with Decoville Light and will use the foam to add stability to the external fabric. Again, line the stabilizer on the wrong side of the fabric and pin around the flap. If you worry about the bulk, then cut the stabilizer without the seam allowance, but you will have to insert the stabilizer once the flap is assembled. We're going to baste it around all sides. Then we need to repeat the process for both bottom panels and the external base. If you are following the sewing instructions, stabilize the remaining pieces in the same way. But like I've mentioned earlier, to reduce the bulk at the seams, I decided to use the back pattern piece to cut another piece of the foam stabilizer to use it on the front. So first I am going to make the pockets and assemble the entire front of the Kate bank and only then I will take the stabilizer and baste it to the wrong side of the front panel. This is how your stabilite pieces should look like. Keep the remaining front stabilizer aside for later. There are various markings on the pattern pieces such as midpoints, magnetic snap placements or zipper pocket placement that you will need to transfer to the wrong side of the fabric. The zipper pocket placement needs to be transferred to the wrong side of the fabric only to one of the internal zipper pocket pieces. For the flap, you will need to mark the magnetic snap placement only on the wrong side of the lining piece. The magnetic snap placement located on the slip pocket, you will need to transfer, however, to the wrong side of the external piece. That is all for this first video. Join me in the next video if you are ready to begin making your own version of the Kate bag. Second video is all about the lining, so we are going to make the lining cargo pocket, zipper pocket and attach the facing. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time. Stay crafty friends.